there, this is Shelley Burkholtz. Welcome to Fiberscapes. On this channel, I share my work in progress on landscape paintings made with yarn and glue on wood panel. Today you will see the completion of my yarn painting titled Rolling Fields. The beginning of the work on this one can be found in my last video through this link. Today I'll share a few of the challenges found while working on this piece itself. I can usually point to something I learned while creating one of my art pieces. This one is definitely no exception. As I try new things and learn from them, possibilities for future projects expand. As much as I do dedicate time and effort to my art, it isn't the only thing in life. Art is always created among other everyday joys and pains and everything in between. I'll expand on that as well. This is where we left off last time, with the middle section of this canola field complete. I'm putting in the foreground here. I did remove some yarns in the corner that were too uniform to add a deeper value, and then I continued on with it along the bottom. I find it funny to watch my work sped up. When I'm working, I'm not so aware of the many step backwards that I take. As I say that, I know that they aren't actually steps backwards. They're just steps along the journey to make my work closer to the essence of what I want. Up on top of the hill in this composition, there are some evergreen trees and some deciduous ones. You'll notice the striped yarn mostly around the perimeter of these dark tree clumps. That's a technique I use to soften my edges. If I put a very dark patch up against the light sky without this transition, the hard edge would bring the elements closer to the viewer in how they'd be perceived. When we're outside looking at things in the distance, they've lost their hard edges compared to objects closer to us. The thick dark evergreens didn't let a lot of light through, but the deciduous ones did. I challenged myself to create that illusion. With yarn, of course, I can't render every detail. The truth is, though, I don't want to get bogged down with too many details anyway. For these leafy trees, I utilized some striped yarns again, but in this case, hoping that the light portions would read as the sky peeking through the branches and leaves. I didn't add trunks, as I found the illusion accomplished without them. A certain airiness was being achieved, so I continued. These clumps surely look different from the clumps on the left. From a distance, I believe they pretty much read the way I intend. This is something I've so far only tried this one time, but it has been added to the toolbox now. Discovery follows exploration, after all. Now I'm moving on to the sky, which is the last element for this work. Here's a little photo of the yellow yarns from my collection. Moving from greenish yellow to close to orange with all the other yellows in the middle. These are the cool tones I used for the canola, and this yarn is what I used for the warm yellow of the sky. Here you can see the beautiful gradual shift from an off-white to a dark yellow in this yarn. I love finding these types of materials. The right yarns can really add to what I can do in a landscape piece. In a quiet sky, a calm sky, such as this one, I want fairly gradual transitions without a lot of contrast. However, there is the warmth up top to contrast the cool colors down below in the field. In the book Dear Theo, which contains letters Vincent van Gogh wrote to his brother, Vincent explains, Just now we have a glorious strong heat with no wind. Just what I want. There is a sun, a light for want of a better word. I can only call yellow, pale sulfur yellow, pale golden yellow. How lovely yellow is. I love his passion for color. For sure, yellow is lovely and so interesting for its possible shifts in temperature. When I stood back and took in this canola field, when it was in bloom, the sea of yellow flowers mixed with their green foliage, which caused the yellow to appear very cool, greenish. That element of the scene was really what inspired me to create this artwork. Sometimes I'm asked if I dye my own yarns. I bet I would love it. Although it does interest me very much, the biggest reason I don't do it is that it would be very time-consuming, and I need that time to spend on my landscapes. There are too few hours available to 
also produced the materials myself. Anyway, I do love surprises that I find while browsing the yarn aisles. Sometimes it's true that I don't find what I need by shopping. In fact, that is the reason I delayed making this canola field. But eventually I found enough to begin. Oftentimes I find something else that I think could work, or, or better, a technique that can change one's perception of a color to make it just what I want. And there we have growth. I didn't like this portion of the sky. I actually went back and forth a number of times. It's so satisfying to rip out portions that aren't working like this. You know how you can really see the sun's rays sometimes where the sun peeks through the clouds? That's the effect that I was going for here. I'll also mention my emotional state and how that impacts a work. Generally, I'm calm and even-tempered, but like anyone, my life isn't without challenges. Emotional, physical, etc. They come up for us all, right? We handle them every day, consciously or unconsciously. This is why I like to read biographies of other artists. Monet's beautiful paintings of water lilies and others are what remain, but to know that they were created amid war and personal losses reminds me of our common humanity. From his letters, I enjoy knowing Van Gogh's struggles with small issues like lighting, distance from his subject, storage problems, etc., and, of course, the larger ones like financial problems and relationships. A person's art is the sum of everything, the obstacles as well as the inspiration. It used to be that if there was a big stress in my life, I couldn't work on my art. These days, I can usually work along, but more than that, I think it actually helps. Sometimes I'm introspective while working, thinking over my concerns, which can be useful. But other times, I get so immersed in what I'm doing that I temporarily stop thinking about them. My work is meditative in that way. I find that this space can allow the needed healing and clarity. Large, quiet areas tend to lay down the quickest. I still try to vary the color subtly and the direction of the yarn strands. The artwork is complete. Here are some details. I hope you enjoyed this project and that you will join me again. Next time I'll share a project I did outside, on site. Thank you so much for being here with me today. You have my best wishes for contributing to the world in a way that is the most fulfilling and joyful for you. I wish you all the best. <laughs>